here. Can you hear me? Let's see, I see UK Exotics, Duke and Enzo the Iggies, Tarouz, Mystic Drake, Laura Taylor, all here. Looks like they've changed the uh, menu interface the last, since last week even. Um, we've got a look at a little, uh, some beetles today. We're going to look at the desert beetle enclosure for part of the video and maybe all of it. We'll see how that goes, but uh, good to see you here. Uh, let's see. Got blue death feigning beetles here. I can see a couple of them crawling around. I'm just about to feed them, and I'm hoping that'll get the beetles active and doing their thing. So, I see Young Lad is here, Mike Fernandez, Lepanthes Cervinus. Oh, did you see the ironclad beetle, the diabolical ironclad beetle? It's in here somewhere. I just saw it a minute ago. I don't know where it is right now. But, uh, yeah, we might end up seeing that one. Oh, suddenly we have lots of people in the house. I see Jordan and Jason, Marcy. <laughs> you thought you had your camera on. Our tanks must look pretty similar. Here, I'm going to put some uh, moistened dog food in a little bit. There's a little bit of fish food in there, too. I'm going to put it in, and we're going to see if we get any interest in it. Sometimes that can be fun. Um, they do like their dog food. So we'll see. It looks like the beetle is um, getting some of the little bit of moisture that was on the side of the container from when I moistened the dog food. Um, let's see. Oh, I see Yotaro is here as well. Renegade Rebel. Freelance human being. Okay, very cool. Oh, there's one. One's coming after the food. Let's see if I can just zoom in a wee bit there. Um, sorry, I apologize for the maneuvering, but I would like to get actually closer in on that and see if I can focus better on the beetle eating. That'd be fun. See if we can do that. Sorry. Manipulating cords and whatnot takes a second. Hmm. There we go. How's that? Is that going to work? I can see the beetle eating. That's kind of fun. Um, I see Joseph Tavir is here as well. And Raceland. Nice. Nice to have you all here. I'm just adjusting a little bit more camera. See if I can get the tripod just a bit more stable. And hopefully everybody can hear me. I'm just plugged into my headphones, I'm afraid, because my, my microphones are being goofy again. They just don't seem to have a long, effective life, these microphones that I get. I need to try something slightly different. So, Vinyasa, thank you. I, I do love these beetles. They're fun. And... Charuz, you're going to get into the desert beetles next. Awesome. I am a little quiet. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'll try to be louder. I can, uh, I can experiment. Is this louder right here? We'll call this uh, attempt one. Is attempt one louder? Two louder. I'm speaking at about the same volume, but there are different ways to do it. So let me know which one sounds better. Attempt one or attempt two. So attempt one, attempt one. Most of you are saying att attempt one was better. So uh, it's not better anymore. How about this? How about this? How's this? I'm trying this and seeing how this sounds. This is better. Okay. Well, we'll go with this then. We'll go with this. Just trying different... Uh, different ones and see what we get. So if, if this is what you like, um, okay, so this is, this is soaked dog food is what's in there. Um, they really like it. 
so I offer it to them. It's not like a perhaps the most nutritious item, but uh, I think it's Hunter's Choice dog food, and they, they seem to do well and like it. So um, this is, yeah, Hunter's Choice, I believe, is the brand of dog food, and that's what we've got here, but I've noticed that the beetles, probably because they got fed recently, are not as excited um, as they might have been. So, but here are a couple of beetles. All right, so I see that Joe Galatine made it for the first time. Congratulations on making it to a live. Okay. Okay, so Duke and Enso, can you briefly tell me how to differentiate Armadillidium nasatum from Frontirostre? Nasatum and Frontirostre. Let's see. I've had... Have I had Frontirostre? I'm trying to remember. Um, I don't know if I have had that species. I had a species that was confused with it for a while. I'm not sure if I have... Hmm. Looking at that. Let me see what I've got. Hmm. I don't think I have Frontirostre to compare to Nizatum. I wish I did. It would make it easier. So Marcy, <laughs> hashtag famous. And freelance human being, this is your first full live. Awesome. So we're not getting a whole lot out of the Beatles. I was hoping we'd get a lot more, and we're not. Um, I'm going to come down here and just... I just fed my Hawaiian opaiula shrimp. I'm going to just take a look at those for a minute, and then I'll take some requests if we can make that work. Apologize for all the wiggling as I maneuver things, change things around. Um, there, look at that. Is that going to work? Yeah. Yeah, maybe that'll work. We'll see. We're just going to look at the shrimp for a second as we figure out what to do. Uh, Anybody have requests for seeing isopods or anything like that? Uh, specific ones? Okay. Let's see. Minyasa made a fantastic trade. The week before last at a show, I bought 13 Purcellio Werneri and traded them for 10 counts of Aegestroy, some Peacegaber lava, and some brown cows, and a couple of springtails. Nice! I'm <laughs> you're up at 1.37am watching beetles and now a shrimp. I'm not getting great focus on the shrimp. So I'm thinking I'm going to switch over to some other bugs, some isopods and things like that. Um, but I need some, uh, let's see, I need some re some requests for species that that I have. Um, let's see. Duke and Enso, do we have Porcelio Silvestri? I do not. And I no longer work with Armadillidium paracai. I ended up selling off my uh, paraki because I'm trying to focus a little bit more on species that I can ship and I can't ship that species. So they're among the species that I have um, sold off. But I, I do have a request for Witch's Brew. Um, all right, and I can, I can honor the request for Witch's Brew. It'll just take me a minute to... Uh, I see him over here. I just have to dig through my uh, colonies a little bit to get to him, but I, I can do that. We can do Witch's Brew, one of my favorites uh, of the larger to medium size, I guess I should say. Medium size Mediterranean Porcelia species. So let's take a look. All right, so say goodbye to the shrimp, everybody. Um, and here we go. 
All right, I'm going to switch. And you can, uh, it's, it's a little easier not to get super dizzy when you have to look at my face, even though maybe you don't want to. But <laughs> now we'll get into the, the shrimp. Okay, I mean, not the shrimp, the dirt shrimp, the isopods. Sorry, my, my uh, words. This morning I woke up with a really bad headache and the headache appears to be gone, but the brain fog not entirely gone. Let's put it that way. Brain fog's not entirely gone. So let's take a look at, at them. Let's see. Um, okay, we got a request for uh, tailless whip scorpion. Yeah, maybe we can look at the female this time. I think we looked at the male last time. Okay, let's take a look. Here we go. Here are some wise brew. Aren't they absolutely gorgeous? They're like the magic potion, Porcelio version of magic potions. There's a couple of young ones just uh, emerged from the pouch not too long ago. And those look like they might be two different clutches, which is good. That means having a lot of babies. Um, just to uh, put it out there, Porcelio or Nottis tend to have very large babies for their body size. So, and these are a, a cultivar, a morph of Porcelio or Nottis. They come from Porcelio or Nottis high yellow, and they have been, they're basically what appeared to be some sort of Dalmatian version of Porcelli or not is high yellow. And I absolutely love them. They are now my favorite Porcelli or Nottis. They're the only one I'm now working with. Well, I guess I have two. Um, one of the only ones that I'm working with now um, because they are fantastic. I can't really ship these. And so they're one of the few that I'm, you know, keeping that I, I can't really ship, but they're fantastic. Big white worm? I don't think so. Had a couple of white things in here. Had this um, shell, and then there's a piece of white cuddle bone that they have now gnawed down to basically nothing. So I need to replace that because they are one of the isopods that really like their calcium. And one of the ones that Orrin McMonagall said he noticed a demonstrable difference in their breeding or vitality or something um, when they're offered supplemental calcium. All isopods need calcium. They definitely do. But a lot of them can get enough from their food. Look at the yellow one. That's like a highlighter yellow. I love it. Um, that skirt is just gorgeous. Let's zoom in on that. Um, there might have been a, a grub in here, a pyralis moth grub. I do get pyralis moth grubs in my colony sometimes. It's hard to avoid when you have as many colonies as I do. And what they do, these little grubs, is um, the pyralis moths are fairly small and they actually make good food for a lot of the critters that I have so it's not all bad but uh, the the worms oh there's a, a little baby porcelli or nonis. look at that a little witch's brew tiny one another one um, they will cause a little cakiness to form with their little silk tunnels that they make in the substrate I think this might be what we're seeing here uh, maybe not that may be something else anyway those uh, pyralis moths they, they live on detritus, so they thrive in isopod colonies, and they're super annoying. But they do make good food, the, both the grubs and the moths. I feed the grubs to jumping spiders, to my um, false black widow, the geckos love them, the little geckos, like the morning geckos love them. You know, lots of things like them a lot. So um, they're not all bad. When I find them, I'll, I'll feed them off to something. But not my favorite thing. So this is Witch's Brew. Witch's Brew is the name of these guys. Um, Porcelli or not is Witch's Brew. Um, I feel like these are almost as bold as Yellow Dots, but not as bold as Yellow Dots. Do Witch's Brew still take food and protein like the Yellow Dots? Yes, I just feel like they're not quite as bold, but and I don't have a gigantic population of these, but I think once I do, I'll see that even more. And Jubilant Dube, a big hello from South Africa. Well, hello, welcome. How do I control overpopulation of my 55 gallon ice podterium? Tell me a little bit more about the setup. What's in there um, and what species you're working with and is that kind of thing. 
So Jason had a question about whether to get hissing cockroaches or blue death fainting beetles. Um, let's see. I would say both are really good. The hissing cockroaches are going to be easier to breed. They're going to be uh, potentially not as long lived as the blue death fainting beetles, but the thing about the blue death fainting beetles is um, they are harder to breed. Not impossible to breed, you can do it, but um, harder to breed. And uh, the blue death fainting beetles are going to be a little less easy to handle long term, I guess. And maybe just a little bit more complicated as far as setup, but you could go either way. So Duke and Enzo, I recently purchased both Porcelionides Virgatus and Porcelionides Big Pine Key. Um, I would uh, advise against cohabbing them. Whether or not they could produce offspring, that's a, it's hard to say, but I wouldn't advise it because basically if they are the same species, they're different localities and the different localities have unique characteristics, which we don't want to muddy in the hobby. We don't want to, to lose those unique characteristics uh, of the different localities. So I would highly advise against mixing them. Uh, if they're the same species and they do interbreed, that's what we've done and it's not a good thing we've lost um, the, the valuable uniqueness of each type. And if we, they're not the same species and we attempt to cohab them, one will likely outcompete the other. So that is my uh, suggestion. Let's see. It's better to house with hissing cockroaches or cleanup crew. Any, any suggestions? Actually, a lot of isopods can do really well and I'm speaking mostly from what I've learned with my interview from Kyle at Roach Crossing, that with hissing cockroaches, because they can climb and because they uh, are ovoviviparous with their offspring, they don't lay egg cases that they leave on the ground, um, most isopods can do really well with them. They can, and the isopods tend to do really well eating the, the roach poop and stuff like that. So that could be a good way to go. And Minyasa, they are, they're small moths. They're not super tiny. They're not as small as like the Indian meal moths that can sometimes be pestiferous in like grain products. They're not quite like that. But um, so if you look up Pyralis, P-Y-R-A-L-I-S, Pyralis, Farinalis, F-A-R-I-N-A-L-I-S, that is the Pyralis moth I'm talking about. I do love the different color antennae, Kearns, totally. So Regina, baby boom going on my panda kings, how do I know when they need a larger container? Well, that is a good question. Panda kings tend to breed fast. So what, what is the size of your container? What's your estimate on how many pods you have? Oh, I see we have a super chat from potato, oh, no, putu bird. Really enjoyed watching your videos and learning. I keep aquatic isopods that are surprisingly similar to their terrestrial counterparts. Fantastic. Do you keep aquatic, uh, freshwater aquatic isopods or marine aquatic isopods? I've done a bit of both, and I'm just curious which one you have. I'm going to put these guys back. If you have another isopod request, folks, I'm going to leave these out here until you um, ask about something else. A different one. Okay. Dairy cows are definitely a larger porcelia that's active. They're not as long as these. They're a bit wider in body proportions. Um, yeah, that's tricky, Mirva. Just uh, when you have new species, it is hard to leave them alone a little bit. But it's, it's usually a good thing. Yeah, I think the Ornatus was investigating my thumb. I think you're right. So... What do you recommend to get your isopods breeding? Um, what kind of isopods do you have? It does it does depend a bit on which type. Um, let's see. For example, I'm just going to grab one of my one of my personal favorites right here. We'll take a we'll take a peek um, as I put these away. Hmm. I want to get these out really quick here. These 
it's honestly mostly lots of leaf litter and lots of patience. <laughs> um, Armadillidium gestroy zingers, and the same with the, uh, the wild types, which I also love. Um, they take a while to grow up, and they usually don't breed until they're pretty large, and then all of a sudden they just produce like crazy. You can see there's one little one, younger individual in there, that must be from a more recent generation than these, but these are not, uh, none of these are like super large, and I see a couple of little ones. There's a couple of dead ones too. That's not good. I should check the substrate on these guys and see if it's time to change it. Let me check my label. I mean, you can just look at it too and get an idea. Yep, it is time to change the substrate for the for these guys, some of it anyway. It's been long enough. Um, Cat and dogs, welcome. Okay, so Regina with uh, 11 in a shoebox, or 11 inch shoebox type container, like a six quart, about 50 panda kings. You probably don't need to um, move them into a larger bin yet. I would wait till you had like 200 or so, probably. Uh, let's see. Oh, Poo Bird has the freshwater ice spots. Cool. I've done that too. Um, did you collect them locally? Cubaris iriomotensis. That is one I don't have. So Mystic Drake. Are the dwarf isopods white, purple, orange, the same species? Can they cohabit together? No, they are not. Now, dwarf orange, I'm not sure which species you're talking about. It could be several. Um, dwarf whites are Trichorhina tomentosa. They uh, are parthenogenic, so they, they won't breed with other species. Uh, dwarf purple... Trying to remember what they've been. I think they've been ID'd now, but I don't remember uh, what the species name was. It's it's uh, fairly recent, and then I'm not sure what you're talking about with the orange, but uh, they are not the same species. In short, and I wouldn't put them together. Most likely, the dwarf whites will outcompete the others over time. Um, so Minyasa, I helped you decide on these, huh? These are gorgeous, aren't they? Okay, so Michael, you're just asking about isopods in general, getting them to breed. Uh, so I kind of mentioned with these, it's just lots of leaf litter and lots of time, let them grow up. But basically, make sure that they get plenty of leaf litter. That helps with a lot of isopods, getting them to breed more quickly. And then take them, uh, make sure they get plenty of supplemental food, including enough, uh, you know, kind of a balance of all the different foods. Make sure you don't let their substrate get exhausted, and most of them will breed like crazy. Freelance human being, your kitten is just staring at the isopods. Well, HS, I have kept freshwater isopods to some degree, and I, I had some pretty good success, but it's been a long time. We'll say, Mir Mirva got a gestroid giant. I haven't heard of that cultivar yet, so I'm I'm interested about that, but I don't know what the answer's the answer is. So Mr. Jack, um, Vulgata can sometimes get really big. It's not terribly common for them to get as big as Jestroy. So that's unusual if you got that going on. I uh, I think that's awesome. Um, Katya, congratulations on your gran granulata magic potion and your frontal triangulum. That's cool. Oh, Kevin. Get to get your uh, start changing your substrate in your ducky bin. Yeah, flake soil is great for duckies for sure, and many other isopods. So, a granulata magic potion. It's kind of an unfortunate thing that so many things have been named magic potion because it kind of causes some confusion. It's basically a Dalmatian version of Armadillidium uh, granulatum. Jordan Ebert, any tips for increasing my clue guy colony? Um, let's see. Let's look at my most thriving clue guy colony right now, shall we? I don't have a 
have any really big food guide colonies. But I've noticed that, oh, these guys need some more leaves. This is my uh, Klugei orange, which is apparently a Montenegro cultivar, and they are doing really pretty well for this container. I moved them up to this larger container recently, and they are doing really well. Um, I would say they do like things, canned green beans. I mean, who knew, right? Canned green beans. They, they love those. Those are a great food for them. They like a little bit of protein, too. They like a, a moist air, but they like a, a good gradient, so you, they want it pretty dry on the other end. And they do really, really well. Um, you can see they're breeding fast, growing fast. I give them a lot of things like dog food and fish food, too, to keep their protein up. And they really, really seem to, to thrive on that. So they're doing really well. And most of the time, like... With a lot of things, I really love the wild types, and uh, I'm not so much of a fan of the changing the color, but it does depend on which colors and so on. I'm a big fan of orange, so I love these, especially the variation, because some are more orange and some are almost red, so I really love them. I just I just became a huge fan of these. I love the wild types, too. These, uh, you can see they have, some have orange and, uh, they have, well, they all have orange, some have yellow and white spots and some just have yellow spot or just white spots but i really like how they they look and i think making sure they have plenty of food i put like a big piece of dog food in there and they go after it i put um cuddle bone in there and they go after it you can see this piece of cuddle bone i put in here was just a month or two ago fairly big piece and they've worn most of it away some of the other pieces in there they've completely eaten and we've just got wall to wall isopods on the cork bark almost and look how the younger ones a lot of them are very much lighter in color and then as they get older they get darker i love that just the gradation is beautiful they need some more leaf litter though they're running low i'm gonna i'm gonna top them off on leaf litter so um let's see now i'm catching up i'm i probably missed a bunch of bunch of stuff but i'm i'm trying to catch up on the uh the stream a little bit i won't be able to catch all of it so um make sure you if i miss your question don't don't feel too shy about repeating it. you know don't spam it but um repeat it if you need to after a minute or two if i've missed it so um let's see do i have armadillo and warner i i do i used to have orange warner i ended up selling it the entire colony at an expo because once again i can't sell warner i i can sell clue guy this species so this is one of the ones I want to focus on because I can chip it, you know, and so that's that's what I'm doing. I So I sold off my orange one, right? I loved them. They're like these almost. They look a little different because they have five, five rows of white spots only. They get bigger, so they're impressive when they're orange, especially. They look awesome. But I do have the wild types, and they're doing pretty well. I didn't happen to sell those off at the expo, so I still got them. Um, I'm going to get those out we'll take a look they're not as the colony is not as mature but i do have some in it so let's take a look at those sorry about the just looking at the plain lids i'm not a big fan of doing that to people let's take a look at here see what we can see um these are armadillidium warneri and they're really pretty too i don't think their red is quite as vivid as the uh armadillidium clue guy exactly and when they're younger, they seem to be less vivid, and they get older, they're a little more vivid. But they're gorgeous, and they get nice and big. Um, okay. So, Minyasa, um, what is the reddest ice pod you've seen? I think one of the reddest ice pods I've seen, besides some of the Merulanellas, um, are... Actually, some of the uh, Sant Lucia Armadillidium vulgare, they can be incredibly red. And so that is Werneri there. And then, let's 
see. Um, somebody asked about the lavas, Porcelio Scaber lava. It's actually Porcelio CF Forma Lusitanus lava. Porcelio Scaber CF Forma Lusitanus lava. I do have them. And I love them. I moved them into a larger bin recently, so they, they're still trying to fill it up. But let's take a look, see what we see. There's not a ton in here. Uh, they're absolutely beautiful. My favorite Porcelius Gaber, followed closely by Orange Koi. But I just love the contrast between the orange and the, the dark gray and the variability in the individuals. Some are almost entirely all gray, some are entirely all gray. Some are about half, and and some are almost entirely orange, and there's every gradation in between, as you can see here. That one right in the middle of the screen right now, I mean, fantastic. Love it. Um, let's see. Somebody was saying, was it Frank to Tank? Talking about we're almost to 70K. We're so close to 70K. Should probably do something exciting about that. So Jason, what would I do to prevent ice pods overcrowding my hissing cockroaches, and how would I be able to tell? Well, you probably would have to thin them out uh, periodically, and I would maybe put something in there that's not like the fastest breeder in the world. You could put like one of the slower breeding Cubaras in there, and they would probably do pretty well, um, based on what, uh, based mostly on what Kyle has told me from Roach Crossing. He says when. He puts Cubaris with uh, hissing cockroaches, they do really well, and then you wouldn't have any trouble getting rid of them, because, you know, rubber duckies, who's going to, you know, you could you could find a market for them pretty easily. That might be one way to go. Let's see what's under this bigger piece of uh, stuff here. Oh yeah, got a good number under there too. I'm not quite to the point where I can sell, because these this colony is in grow mode, and hasn't been producing very copiously yet. You can see so there's younger individuals in here, but I need to, to let it breed just a little bit more before I can start selling from it, which is unfortunate because there's always demand for these, understandably. Um, someone was just asking me about it, and I was like, oh, I wish I could sell them, but I'm not quite there yet. Do I have Peacecaber Lemonade? I do have a small colony of Lemonade. Let's see if there's anybody under there. Just one that looks like it recently molted. Uh, and that stuff here, this is just uh, this is expanding foam from a different project. I used this in a different project and then removed it, and that's what's going on there. So um, I am going to get some lemonades, and I think I need to do a Taylor's Whip Scorpion. I owe you a Taylor's Whip Scorpion. Uh, so at least a viewing of, of one. Oh, my mind just went blank. I'm getting lemonades. I have a small colony of lemonades I want to get going. So it keeps cutting out the cutting out the chat. So shipping snails is not something I know much about because I can't do it. It's pretty much illegal in my state and it's uh, many land snails are illegal in the US. Um, but so I don't know about that one very much. But in my state, they're particularly tight about it. And especially like the Akatina species, those are illegal, I think, everywhere in the U.S. Like it's a federal law. These are the lemonades, and they are pretty. I like the variability in the lemonades. I'm having trouble focusing for some reason, but they're pretty ones. Um, there's a few more there. Like I said, still a small colony. I want to get them up to speed. They're breeding, but they're going to need some time to get up where I need them. I, I really like them, though. They're pretty. Okay, should we look at some more? Um, after, if you have an isopod request, let me know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a, one of the uh, Taylor Swift scorpions. Get my little female out. 
Now, it's been, uh, just spilled leaf litter. I kicked the thing over. Spilled leaf litter, not fun. This is my little female um, Taylor's Whip Scorpion here. She's a beauty, she's little. And thanks Marcy for joining in. I'm glad I was able to uh, chat with you for a minute and you were able to uh, participate. I hope to see you in a new next one. So this one you can see has lost part of its antenniform leg, but not a big deal, it'll get it in the next molt. So I hope Yotaro is still here to appreciate. This is Damun Diadema. Oh, Yotaro is here, good. Damun Diadema, the captive bred individual I bought from Roach Crossing around a year ago, I believe. Very, I uh, was quite a bit smaller at the time and has grown, molted a few times. Oh, interesting, Frank, I didn't know that, that you could view everyone's chat history as a moderator. I didn't even know I could view their chat history, but they have changed a lot of things, so that kind of makes sense. So, Cheruz, I'm not really working with Porcelio Expansis anymore. Another one I can't ship. So. So, maximum for e exotics. 13 colonies. Awesome. I'm not sure what species you have either, Yotaro, but it's... Um, I... Have I seen it? Have I seen it? Have you? Have I seen video or pictures of it somewhere? I'm trying to remember. Minyasa tailless whipscarves can live quite a few years. This species has been known to live at least 15 years, I believe. So 10 years is not unusual, not super unusual. I the longest I've ever had one has been seven years, I believe. Uh, the ones I have now are younger. I originally got a trio, sold a male, to someone who had a female, and they eventually produced babies. Um, then I lost my male a few years later and then kept my female for quite a long time until she passed away. So Duke and Enzo, um, it is mostly a national thing. I mean, there are different regulations in different states, so you can ship fewer species to, say, like Florida or Louisiana uh, than you can to some of the other states. But there, every state... It's regulated through APHIS, and they regulate isopods. So there are regulations about shipping isopods in every U.S. state. Okay, so I haven't seen yours then. So, Putu Bird, do you have any leucistic isopods? You're close. You just need a, a E before the U in leucistic, or leucistic. As is probably more correct. Um, I do. I do have some. So, uh, let's see. I'm going to put this lady back. Just a second. I'm going to get some leucistic isopods out. It is possible that many of the isopods in our hobby are, are leucistic because... Leucism or leukism interferes with the distribution of pigment. Um, and typically leaves a lot of... It leaves some pigment in the eye, and then in some species, it, uh, it manifests as... Or some manifestations of it, I should say, show up as spottiness, like poorly distributed... Color. So you get like a white background with random dark splotches on it, like, you know, Armadillidium Bulgari Magic Potion, for example. But sometimes that doesn't pan out. It looks quite different. Here are examples here of leukistic uh, Porcelio Scaber. You see they have the dark eyes, but a very pale body. These were isolated by Kyle of Roach Crossing, and he sent me some. There's a young individual that was born here, and this is one of the individuals, the specimens that he sent me. It's not focusing, maybe because of the color. I'm having trouble with that. Let's see if I can get another one in a different angle. The colony's quite young, but as you can see, they are reproducing. I think both of these individuals were born here. Um, 
and they're growing. I got them in November, I believe. Oh, I'm sorry, Kevin. I think I remember you telling me about getting your Dama Diadema. And uh, that's so sad that it passed away. Sorry to hear that. Oh, it looks like I can focus on these better. I hope you're able to, to source another one. That's horrible that you lost that one. Sorry to hear that. Blue-eyed Lucy, I really love that. I I would love a like a blue-eyed leucistic rat snake or a blue-eyed leucistic uh, leucistic ball python, something like that. I would absolutely love that. Nothing going on here much, I guess. Lots of springtails. Just checking out the uh, the hides and seeing what we see. So obviously the colony is off to a start, but it's a new colony, and I'm sure a lot of them are hiding right now down in the substrate and whatnot, but, uh, you know, you see a few of them. I love that they have such dark eyes. 503, oh, you have a black-eyed Lucy. I love those, too. Sometimes it's hard to decide which one I would want more. I just, I love either one, obviously. One love tarantulas usually have them. Okay, that's good to know. I'm going to try to produce some, but it'll probably be... A year or two before I do, before mine are ready to do that. Yeah, I actually worked in a zoo where they had a blue-eyed leucistic alligator on loan from, uh, was it the National, which aquarium was it? The Aquarium of the Americas. Um, so the zoo I worked in had it on loan. Um, from the Aquarium of the Americas, and while I worked there, so it was really cool to see a leucistic alligator. And he had the blue eyes, the white body, and then random splotches of dark uh, wild type coloration. Just a few of them, like mostly around his mouth. European legless lizard. I think that would be cool. I've met them before, I've never had one. Here's some orange koi. You can see they're reproducing. There's a little wee one. I love the variation on orange koi. Just look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. There's just a few. This is a small, uh, small colony, but I'm trying to get them to, to take off. And they are breeding, obviously. You can see a few little ones in there. So where did I get the isopods from? The 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 Lucy's, the Porcelio Scaber Lucy are from um, RoachCrossing.com. Kyle has produced. He's been working with isopods longer than most people. That's safe to say, longer than me, longer than uh, most people in the isopod hobby. He was one of the very few, uh, and one of the earliest sources that I looked to to learn about isopods. Um, been working with him for a long time and has isolated a lot of different varieties. There's some panda kings. Uh, Mystic Drake, I, you're probably thinking of Porcelio Magnificus. They, uh, the wild types are indeed orange with a white skirt, a very thin white skirt. Oh my goodness, Kevin. Ryan McVeigh has those? I need to talk to Ryan McVeigh. I, I've interviewed him before, it's been a while, but uh, I need to get into some leucistic garters, blue-eyed leucistic garters. I love Easterns. I love Flames. I love um, Melanistics, and I would love leucistics. Well, you know what would be awesome? Um, you could probably, with just a little selective breeding over time, get like a double, some double het Melanistics that produced both melanistic and leucistic offspring in the same litter. Wouldn't that be fantastic? <laughs> um, or vice versa. You could get the leucistics that produced melanistic. Um, 
and, and the acoustics in the same litter. That'd be really fun. I, I love that. I love it. That he's doing that and that he has those. I've seen Don's um, pearl leukistics over at his place. I, I wonder how they're doing. So, yeah, 503, I totally get it. They're, they're pretty but persistent. Yeah, I don't have any isopods, well, very few isopods that are under my orange koi. <laughs> oh, Mr. and Mrs. Morelli is back. Awesome. Great to see you here. Here are my Dubrovniks, my Klugei Dubrovniks. Just taking a peek. Love their little red stripes all the way across the back. That's unique as far as I know. You don't see that a lot in uh, ice pods in general, but you don't. It kind of looks a little bit like something Punta Cana would do, but you don't see it in Klugei except for in Dubrovniks as far as I know. I don't have Slano, so I don't really know about Slano. Let's see. Um, Arturo, with how many isopods do you start a colony? My rule of thumb is as many as possible. This is typically a really good thing. Uh-oh. Look what do we have here. That looks like it could be potentially a magic potion. I don't know what that is, so it's going in the gem mix bin. It looks like a vulgare, though, for sure. And not knowing whether it is a... Whew, sorry. Whether it is a magic potion or a Japanese magic potion, which should really be called, like, Japanese Dalmatian, or something else. I'm not going to put it in my pure line... Magic potion, obviously. That would be a, a grave mistake. So I'm going to put it in my gem mix because that's about the only safe course of action. If I'm going to put it in any isopod bin, to put it in my gem mix, that's not going to hurt anything. So that's what I just did. Sorry for the uh, visual issues there as I was doing that. I was surprised to see that there. So Duke and Enzo, Armadillidium Bodium, that's the uh, Castel Dacia, right? Um, let's see. I don't know. I think it just, it was fairly recently brought into the hobby, and they got it breeding really well, and now it's showing up more, I think, is what's going on. So let's see. I had a question. Do you recommend for getting mites out of springtail cultures? Usually... Um, if you can get the springtail culture really thriving, that's the best thing you can do. And they kind of outcompete the mites. Um, not, not always possible, but if you can do it. I'm going to take a look at my... Uh, take a look at my piebalds. I just have a few piebalds I'm trying to get started. and wanted to check on those and see how they're doing. Oh, we just had a big uptick in viewers. We've got 55 viewers right now. And 503 just had a good suggestion too. Using the cucumber trick. Let's see how these piebalds are doing. See, Kyle was saying that the piebalds are possibly basically the coloration is not truly genetic and what we're actually breeding for is survivability of some sort of like a viral or bacterial infection or something that causes this. And so it's heritable because the parents infect their children, but we're breeding for ones that can survive it without, you know, deleterious effects to their to their health. And that's an interesting idea, and I wonder if that's true. It's, it'd be interesting to find out how that works because their, uh, their reproduction does not seem to follow Mendelian rules. Oh, we've got another super chat. Um... So, Mr. and Mrs. Morelia, thank you for the super chat. Let's see if we can address your question here. So, it says, how difficult is it to clean up a colony of P. prunosis that might have gotten contaminated by a close relative's other prunosis? Um, okay, let me let me help you out with that one. I, I love that question, and I'm going to get a visual aid for that. I'm going to be right back. Okay. Put 
this back. I don't see any babies in there, but that doesn't mean they're not in there. We didn't look at the whole thing. Okay, I actually made a video about this recently, um, but I want to give you as much as I can about this. So what I did, I found in my uh, Porcelionides prunosus whiteout colony. So these are like, they have white eyes. The entire isopod is white. Anything that you see is not white is either in their digestive tract or comes from uh, like sequestered carotenoids or other colorants that they have ingested, not, not the actual pigment that they're producing. And as you can see, they look pretty white. And I don't see any others of any other colors here. I had my whiteout colony invaded by just wild type uh, or messenger. They can be hard to tell apart sometimes. Uh, Prenosis. And I was worried that they were going to, you know, cause genetic issues because they, they do interbreed. As far as we know, all Porcelionides prenosis can interbreed and they can even interbreed with Porcelionides floria. So they might be able to interbreed with messenger even if it turns out not to be the same species. As far as we know it is, but it may not be. So what I did, and this, this is more documented in my other video, but just to give you an idea, what I did is collected a bunch of tiny babies. Like, that's a little one. You want to collect them when they're as small as you can uh, so that they haven't mated because they can and will mate when they are younger and smaller than adult, uh, than the average adult size. They're quite a bit smaller, like a third of the size of, the, of an adult can mate and produce offspring. It doesn't even have to be full size to produce the offspring. So what I did is went and collected as many small white uh, whiteouts as I could. I got about 20-ish of them, I think, and just put them in a new bin and then started breeding them and put everything else in my party mix because there's no way I can take out all the wild types. And since wild types are dominant, I, that's a big problem. So by taking all the little teeny whiteouts out and then started starting to breed them, that's really the only way to preserve the color of the whiteouts. And so far it seems to be working. All the young ones in here are coming out white, which means none of the whiteouts were compromised as far as we can tell by genetics from others because this is a recessive trait. So if, it, if there had been a wild type mating with these, uh, the adults that are in here now when they were smaller, which is why I chose them so small, so that, that possibility was reduced, uh, that we would see some, some wild types in here, but we don't. So I think I have successfully uh, saved it. Hopefully that helps. Minyasa. So it depends on where you are. I think uh, Ryan Pavey is really well known. Springtails US, really well known for springtails. It kind of depends on what you're looking for with springtails. Um, what are you after? Are you after like ornamental springtails, mm -hmm. utilitarian springtails? Kind of depends on what you mean. Um, I ship springtails, but only one or two species of springtails. I'm not. I'm not into the ornamental springtail business for the same reason, or at least partially for the same reason that uh, I'm not into shipping a lot of ice pods, because I don't have permits to ship most of these ornamental springtails. I do have permits to ship a couple of others. So that's what I work with, that's what I ship. But they're just like bioactive springtails, like the ones you've seen in a lot of these bins here. And uh, that's it. Like you can see a couple of them on this uh, piece of cork bark. These are my uh, orange creams. Porcelionides prenosis orange cream. Love this uh, form. It's probably my favorite form of Porcelionides prenosis. Just absolutely gorgeous. But uh, yeah, that's what I would say about springtails. Try Ryan Pavey if you have interest in ornamental springtails. And Minyasa. Okay, I have, I have uh, the bioactive, you know, cleanup crew springtails for sure. So Newberger, I haven't really tried rabbit pellets, but I have tried fish pellets, and mine go crazy for fish pellets. So Brandon, do you ever plan on venturing deeper into fish? Well, I, this is not well known by everyone, but I actually did a podcast just on aquarium stuff from like 2008 to 2016. 
and that's how Quermax started. And I have kept and bred a wide variety of fish. Um, and it's, I'm not really focusing, I have fish, I keep fish, I, I like fish a lot. I'm not really focusing on fish now. Um, if I had unlimited space and time, I would definitely have some more fish. There are fish that I'm interested in getting. It's just at this moment, uh, fish are a lot more work than a lot of the arthropods and even the reptiles that I keep. And I have to be careful about that because I'm trying to simplify. I was talking about the isopods and simplifying for the reasons of permits. And that is true, absolutely true, that I'm, I'm trying to focus more on isopods that... Uh, that I can ship, but I, I should also add to that, that I'm also trying to simplify my life a little bit. And so things that take a lot more maintenance, I'm not really um, getting into as much right now. I, I have to be very careful about that. But um, definitely there are fish that I would keep if I could, um, if I had more time and more uh, space. Agreed, Mr. and Mrs. Morelia. I think it's a good idea to do that with all colonies, just to make sure you should have backups. So Duke and Enso, I think um, Prunosis and Floria, to my understanding, and Nathan Jones, the American isopodologist who has helped with a lot of the taxonomy and isopods, if I recall correctly, and I could be wrong, but I remember from a conversation we had a while ago, the only way to really differentiate them successfully is micro um, microscopy. You have to like dissect them and look. Uh, and so that's what, and he even said that he thinks some of the isopods in the hobby currently are possibly hybrids, like some of the the morphs we have in the hobby are actually actually hybrids. So and that can work too, Merva. Hmm, let's see. Have you ever heard about Alolobophora chlorotica. Green earthworm is a pet. I don't think I have. That sounds interesting. Probably more like live food. It makes sense. Um, so Mystic Drake. I'm not an expert on ant keeping. I had an ant colony that I founded with queens that I collected and had for about three years or so. But that has been decades. So my information is probably pretty outdated. But... Uh, the T. immigrans is supposed to be a really good uh, beginner species. That's what I worked with. I can't remember the whole genus name, but it starts with T. T. immigrans, and they are a species that lives all over the country now here in the U.S. and probably other places in the world. F uh, fairly easy to do, and that's what I worked with. And having kept it for about three years, that was would be a good option. And they're not that time consuming either, but. Getting a good uh, setup is a little bit expensive, whether you buy it or create it. Yep, T. immigrants, the pavement ants. Yep, that's the one. And it's spelled without the last T there, the immigrants with just N S. But that's that's the one I'm talking about. I think it is spelled that way. Could be wrong. It is about that time. Thank you, uh, Frank the Tank, um, and thank you, Putu Bird and Mr. and Mrs. Amelia for the super chats. Fantastic really helps me out and I should go but um, I just wanted to thank you all for joining in and uh, I'm really excited about the video that I'm releasing on Friday so please be sure to check that out leave a comment or a like or something like that whatever let, just let me know what you think about it but I'm pretty excited about it I had a lot of fun shooting it and so on so um, please keep an eye out for that and take care everyone